What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my hands-on and first impressions video of the LG K51. So let's get started. So this is the LG K51. Now I did buy this from Boost Mobile with my own money and currently the device is available for $89.99. Now I have no idea if or when the phone will be available unlocked or if it's gonna be making its way over to other carriers as well, but let's hope that we get both of those things because I know that many of you that watch my content don't use Boost Mobile. I do know though that LG has a lot of big plans moving into this year to launch a variety of different budget phones in their K-series. I know that they've also talked about launching a K51S and also I believe a K41 and K61. So we'll see what happens, but in the meantime, I do have the K51. Now I did already set up the phone for the purpose of saving some time here, but before we get too far into that, I wanna show you everything else that does come included. So we get a SIM card removal tool, we get an information and safety guide, we get a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer, and we get an LG branded wall adapter. So this wall adapter is 10 watts, by the way. So here is the LG K51. Now this device features a 6.5 inch display. It is an LCD display at 720p. We're getting a PPI of 293 and a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio. So despite it being 720p, the display still does have very good colors and is nice and crisp and clear. So I personally do prefer AMOLED over LCD, but overall I'm pretty satisfied, especially considering the price tag of the phone. Now up top here, we do have a hole punch for the front facing camera and the front facing camera on the device is 13 megapixels. Definitely stay tuned for my full review to see photo and video samples from the device. Now internally, we're getting 32 gigabytes of storage and there's also SD card expansion. So you certainly can put a micro SD card into the phone. Now there's no wireless charging with the LG K51, but we do get a fingerprint sensor on the back. So we'll try that out right now. So there we go, very quick there with the fingerprint sensor. There is no face unlock available, unfortunately. Now on the back of the device, we have a triple camera setup. So we have a 13 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide angle camera at 115 degrees, and we have a two megapixel depth sensing camera. So really cool to see that LG is finally bringing an ultra wide angle camera over to their budget devices. And it seems like LG is starting to take the budget market a bit more seriously, especially compared to some of the phones that they launched last year, which were very underwhelming in general. But so far, I really like what I see with the LG K51. But we are getting portrait mode with the front and rear cameras, which is really good. The device features three gigabytes of RAM and features the MediaTek Helio P22 processor. Now I will be doing a benchmark test very soon and I will be showing you the scores from that test. But from my experience, the P22 is not the most powerful MediaTek processor ever, that's for sure. But considering that this phone is less than $100, I feel like it does get the job done. So again, I'm gonna to wanna to use this phone quite a bit more. I did download a variety of my favorite applications to test here on the device, but I'm very interested to see how things hold up here and whether or not LG's choice to go with MediaTek this time instead of Qualcomm pays off. Now, if you're not familiar with the MediaTek Helio line of processors, they're actually a lot better than many of the MediaTek processors that came out in the past. However, the P22 is kind of towards the bottom of their range. They do offer much better processors such as the Helio P60 and P70, but we'll see how things turn out here. Now, the phone features 1080p video recording. We're getting a beefy 4,000 milliamp hour internal battery with the device. And the software on here is Android 9 Pi. Now that's another downside with the LG K51. It's pretty amazing that in the month of May of 2020, they're launching phones with Pi on them, considering that we're almost about to get Android 11. So that's a little bit frustrating, a little bit of a letdown there. I don't know if they have plans to update this device to Android 10. We are of course getting LG's skin on the device as well, which generally I don't mind. But like I said, at the very least, I'd like to have the latest and greatest version of Android. Now this phone does not have NFC. So if you're someone that does use NFC, then you're not getting that feature with the phone. Now taking a look at the left side of the device, we're getting the volume up and down buttons and we're getting the Google Assistant button. So 
That's kind of cool, I suppose, if you use Google Assistant, but otherwise, it's not too useful. I'm gonna have to look into if you can remap this or not. I have a feeling you can't, but hopefully at the very least, we can disable it. Taking a look at the right side of the phone, we have the volume button and we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the top of the phone, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have the microphone. We have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer and the speaker. Then taking a look at the back side of the device, we have, of course, that triple camera setup and we have the fingerprint sensor and that's about it. So in general, I think this is actually a very good looking device. I know that it does feature some older style cues, such as having the water drop notch at the top and kind of the thicker bottom bezel. But compared to what LG was launching last year in this price range, this phone is actually a big step in the right direction. And if you think about it, considering that the phone is currently available for $89.99, which is a discount from the retail price of $149.99, you know, at either of those two prices, I feel like you are still getting quite a bit of phone here for the money. But I definitely want to get a bit more usage out of it before I know for sure whether it's worth getting or not. But I did want to make this quick video kind of letting you know that I did indeed get the device and kind of sharing you my first impressions. But as far as a phone from Samsung that would compete with the LG K51, I would say that the Samsung Galaxy A11 is probably their most comparable model. So I will indeed be doing a comparison between the LG K51 and Galaxy A11. I know that Samsung has their own Galaxy A51, and hopefully people don't get confused thinking that this phone competes with that phone since they both have 51 in the name. But I hope you enjoyed this video about the LG K51. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.